In this video, we will look at fundamental theorem of calculus, and then we will apply it to finding some definite integrals. And we will also look at some examples finding area under curve. So fundamental theorem of calculus can be stated like this. Suppose f is a continuous function on the interval a, b, and g is an antiderivative of f on the interval. Then integral from a to b of f is simply g at b minus g at a. So basically we find the antiderivative of the given function and then evaluate at those two points at the limits of integration and take the difference. So that will give us the value of the definite integral. Here is a notation that we generally use. So this part here basically means evaluate um, function g at b and a and then do the difference like we have here. Okay, so we will look at some examples now. First, we have integral of x squared from four to six. So the first step is to try to find the antiderivative of x squared. And for that, we can simply use this formula over here. If we compare x squared with x to n, our n will be two. So it will look like x to two plus one divide by two plus one. And we evaluate this from four to six. Let's simplify this a little bit. We get x cubed over phi evaluated from four to six. Next we plug in the values of x and then evaluate. So when x is six, we have six cubed over three. And when x is four, we have four cubed over three. So basically we have six cubed minus four cubed. Six cubed is 216 minus four cubed is 64. All this divided by three. So 216 minus 64 will come out to be 152. So we get 152 over three. And if you'd like, you can use your calculator and, uh, to write it in the decimal, decimal form, round it to let's say two decimal places will be 50.67. So this is the value of this particular integral. Let's look at the next example now. So here we are looking at integral of one over x from one to two. So basically we are looking at area under the graph of function one by x from x equals one to x equals two. So you know a graph of one by x looks like this one. We are looking at this area from one to two. We are looking at this area. Okay. So for that, we'll be using fundamental theorem of calculus. And to use that, we'll need to find the antiderivative of one by X, which is given by this formula here. So this will be natural log of X, where X goes from one to two. This becomes natural log of two, and I don't have to write the absolute value sign because two is positive, minus natural log of one. Natural log of one is simply zero, so we are left with natural log of two. So this is the value of this integral, this definite integral, and which is also this area. So we found that this area is natural log of two. Now let's look at the next example. Here we, we are trying to find integral of function one over square root of t times one minus t from zero to four. 
Again, the first step is to try to find the antiderivative of one over square root of t times one minus t. Now this function doesn't look like any of the functions we have in these formulas, but we can try to rewrite this and see if it will look like any of these. We have one over square root of t times one minus t. Square root one over square root of t, I can write as t to negative one half, then times one minus t. Then I can distribute this t to negative one half, t to negative one half minus t to one half. Because one half plus one half exponent for t will give us one half. So I can rewrite like this. Basically, I have integral from zero to four, t to negative one half minus t to negative one half. Now, this t to negative one half and t to one half are of the form x to n. So I can apply this formula for the first part, n is negative one half. So we get t to negative one half plus one over negative one half plus one. And for the second one, we get t to one half plus one divided by one half plus one because n is one half in the second one. And now we evaluate this expression from zero to four. So before we evaluate, let's simplify this a little bit further. So we have t to negative one half plus one is simply one half and also one half in the denominator minus t to one half plus one is three halves divided by three halves. And we need to evaluate this from zero to four. So now we can do the evaluating part. So this will look like when I plug in four for t, I will have four to one half over one half minus four to three by two over three by two. I'm going to erase this part here. minus, next we evaluate the function at zero. So zero to one half over one half minus zero to three by two over three by two. So four to one half is simply square root of four, which is two over here we still have divided by one half minus four to three by two is uh, four to power one half times three. So for this expression, I can quickly show you how to evaluate this one here. So we have four to three by two. So this is same as saying four to one half cubed, but four to one half is two, which is two cubed, so we get eight. So we have eight over three by two over here. Minus, so zero to one half, the square root of zero is zero, and the second part is also zero. So we have simply zero. Right, so two over one half is four, minus eight over three halves is 16 by three. So we get four minus 16 by three. This I can write as 12 by three minus 16 by three so that we have common denominator. Then it comes out to be negative four over three is the value of this definite integral. Let's look at the next example now. So here we are looking at integral of secant x from zero to pi by four. 
Again, the first step is to try to find the antiderivative of secant x. So we we'll try to see if we have a formula for antiderivative of secant x. In this example, we want to find integral of secant x tangent x from zero to pi by four. So the first step is to find the antiderivative of secant x tangent x. And using this formula, we have the antiderivative right away. So the antiderivative of secant x tangent x is simply secant x. And we want to evaluate this from zero to pi by four. Now we plug in the limits of the integration. Then we have secant of pi by four minus secant of zero. And now you can use your unit circle or your calculator to get these values. Or you can think about secant as reciprocal of cosine and write like that. So this becomes one over cosine pi by four and one over cosine zero. So one over cosine pi by four is square root two over two minus one over cosine zero is one over one. Let me simplify this little further. One over square root two over two is two over square root of two. We can just flip the denominator and make it a multiplication minus one. And if you like, you can also rationalize the denominator in the first one. So that will give you two root two over two minus one, which is simply square root of two. So this is the value of this definite integral. Okay, this is the next example we have here. Here we are looking at integral of the function three e to x plus x square from zero to one. So again, we try to find the antiderivative of three e to x plus x square. For that, we can use the formulas we have here. So for the first part, we know that the antiderivative of e to x is e to x. So we can simply apply that formula and get three e to x plus, for the second part, we can use this formula with n equals one. So that will give us x to two plus one over two plus one. And then we evaluate this expression from zero to one. Before plugging in the limits of integration, let me simplify this a little further. So three e to x plus x cubed by three, evaluated from zero to one. So now I'm ready to plug in the values. So first one is three e to one plus one cubed by three when I plug in one for x. Next, we have uh, three e to zero minus zero cubed by three. Let's uh, simplify this little further. I'm going to go up here. The first part we have uh, becomes three e because e to one is simply e plus one third because one cubed is simply one minus the second part becomes three times e to zero is one. So three times one minus well plus zero cubed is zero. So zero over three is zero. So we have that. So this becomes three e plus one third minus three. This becomes three e plus now one third minus Three I can write as one third minus nine by three. Three is simply nine by three. So now I have a common denominator three in both of these numbers here, second and third terms. So I can now add them and get negative eight over three. So this is the value of the given definite integral. This is the next example we want to work. So here we want to find the area of the region bounded by these functions. 
So the first step is to try to graph these functions and see how the area will, how the region will look like. So I'm going to try to graph the function here. If the function, the first function is y equals four x squared plus x. It's a nice parabola when x is zero, y is zero, so it should go through the origin. And we can find another x intercept by setting the function equal to zero. So basically if you let four x squared plus x equals zero, and upon solving this, we will get another x intercept. So we, I can factor out x, then here I'm left with four x plus one equals zero. And x equals zero is one of the values and the other one will be x equals negative one fourth. So this is another x intercept, which I assume will be somewhere over here. So it's a nice parabola going through those points. So I'm going to try to draw the parabola. Something like that. So this is y equals four x squared plus x. The function y equals four x squared plus x. And we are looking at y equals zero and x equals two the line x equals two is a vertical line at that point. The graph of x equals two looks like that one. This is x equals two. And y equals zero is simply the x axis. So this is the line y equals zero. So the area bounded by these three functions is this one here. We are trying to find the area of this region. So it looks like this reason is simply the integral of four x squared plus x because it is simply the area under the graph of four x squared plus x and our x values go from zero to two. So we evaluate this integral from zero to two. So that will give us the area. So I'm going to copy that integral over here. So area, is the integral from zero to two of four x squared plus x. So now we apply the fundamental theorem of calculus. So for that, we need to find the antiderivative. So we have, we first want to find the antiderivative of the first part four x squared. So I'll write four as it is. And then to get the antiderivative of x squared, I can apply this formula over here. So it becomes x, so x to two plus one over two plus one plus for the next part, we can apply the same formula with n equals one. So we get x to one plus one over one plus one. And we want to evaluate this from zero to two. So this becomes four x cubed over three plus x squared over two. Evaluated from zero to two. Now we are ready to plug in the values. The first part is, I'm going to write this as four third times two cubed plus one half times two squared so we, this is the, this is what we get when you evaluate the function at two. Next, we want to evaluate this at zero. So this will be four third zero cubed minus one half zero squared. Let's uh, simplify this little further. So four by three times two cubed, two cubed is eight times four is 32 by three plus one half times two squared is simply two and minus, so here we get zero. 
So zero k would be zero and zero is square is zero, so just zero. So this comes out to be 32 by three plus uh, two, which I can write as 32 by three plus six by three. So this will, this will give me 38 by three. So this is the area under the curve and which is the area bounded by these three functions. We have another example here. In this example, we want to find the area of the region bounded by these three equations, y equals cosine x, x equals pi by three, and y equals zero. So the first step is to try to graph these three equations and see how the region may look like. So I'm going to try to do that right here. First, let's try to draw the graph of a function y equals cosine x. When x equals zero, we know cosine x is one, so it should go through this point if this is one. And when x is pi by two, cosine is zero, so it should go through that point. So a small part of the graph of this function will look like this one. Like that. Okay. Now another line, another equation given is x equals pi by three, which will simply be a vertical line around here if this is pi by three. So let me draw that vertical line. like that. So this is the equation x equals pi by three, and this is y equals cosine x. Another equation given is y equals zero, which is simply the horizontal axis, the x axis. So looks like the area bound, so looks like the area bounded by these three equations is this one here. So we want to find the area of this region. And just by looking at it, it is the area under the graph of function y equals cosine x from, from x equals pi by three to x equals pi by two. So we can set this up as integral from pi by three to pi by two cosine x dx. So therefore, I'm going to go back here and write down the integral we got. So area equals integral from pi by three to pi by two of cosine x. So the first step is to try to identify the antiderivative of cosine x. And it is simply given here as a formula. So antiderivative of cosine x is sine x then we have uh, this equals sine x and we evaluate that from pi by three to pi by two. Now we can just plug in the values, sine of pi by two minus sine of pi by three using the unit circle or a calculator we get sine of pi by two to be one and sine of uh, pi by three should be square root three over two. So one is two over two minus square root three over two. Now we can combine these two fractions and it comes out to be two minus square root three over two. If you like, you can use your calculator further and write it in the decimal form. This comes out to be 0 0.13397 if you round to five decimal places. So this is the area bounded by these three equations.